Hey, I noticed you've been making a lot of mistakes in English lately. Is everything okay? Can I offer you some help? Oh, thanks for pointing that out. I guess I've been a bit careless with my grammar and vocabulary. I appreciate any assistance you can provide. No problem at all. English can be tricky, especially with its many rules and exceptions. Let's start with the basics. Have you been having trouble with any particular aspect of English? Well, I struggle with verb tenses sometimes. I often mix up past, present, and future tenses, which leads to confusion in my writing and speaking. That's a common issue. Let's focus on that. Firstly, remember that the present tense is used for actions happening now or regularly, while the past tense refers to actions that have already occurred. Future tense, on the other hand, is used for actions that will happen in the future. I see. So, for example, if I want to talk about something that happened yesterday, I should use the past tense. Exactly. Instead of saying, I go to the store yesterday, you would say, I went to the store yesterday. It's important to match the verb form with the appropriate tense. Got it. I need to pay more attention to that. What about irregular verbs? They always confuse me. Irregular verbs can be tricky, but with practice, you'll get the hang of them. Unlike regular verbs that follow a pattern when changing tenses, irregular verbs have their own unique forms. For example, the verb go becomes went in the past tense, not goad. Ah, I see now. So, I should say, I went to the store yesterday instead of, I go to the store yesterday. That makes sense. Exactly. You're getting the hang of it. Another area where people often make mistakes is with prepositions. They can be challenging since they don't always follow a specific rule. Have you encountered any difficulties with prepositions? Yes, prepositions have always been a bit confusing for me. I often struggle to choose the right one in different contexts. It can be challenging, but there are some general guidelines. For example, we use in for enclosed spaces like rooms or countries, on for surfaces, and at for specific locations or events. However, there are exceptions and idiomatic uses that you'll learn over time. I see why I've been having trouble. I need to pay more attention to the specific context and choose the right preposition accordingly. Exactly. It's all about practice and being mindful of these grammar rules and patterns. Additionally, reading English books, watching movies, and listening to English conversations will help you familiarize yourself with the language and improve your overall fluency. I really appreciate your support and encouragement. It's great to have someone to turn to when I need help with my English. Speaking of which, do you have any funny or memorable language mishap stories of your own? Oh, definitely. I remember one time when I was studying abroad, I tried to order a sandwich at a local cafe. But instead of asking for ham in English, I accidentally said jam. So, I ended up with a sandwich filled with strawberry jam instead of ham slices. It was quite a sweet surprise. Ha ha ha, that sounds hilarious. 
I can only imagine the confusion on your face when you took a bite. It's moments like these that make language learning entertaining. I'm glad I'm not the only one who has made funny mistakes. Making mistakes is a natural part of the learning process, and it's important to be able to laugh at ourselves. In fact, some of the most memorable language experiences come from those unexpected slip-ups. It takes away some of the pressure and makes the journey more enjoyable. I'll try to keep a light-hearted attitude and embrace my mistakes as learning opportunities. By the way, do you have any tips or resources that have helped you improve your English skills? Certainly. One of the most effective methods for me was immersing myself in the language as much as possible. I watched English movies with subtitles, listened to podcasts and music, and even tried to think in English during my daily activities. It helped me develop a natural flow and better understanding of the language. I'll give it a try and start incorporating more English media into my routine. I think it will help me become more comfortable with the language. Remember, practice makes perfect. The more you expose yourself to English, the more confident you'll become. Also, don't hesitate to join language exchange programs or find a language partner who can help you practice speaking and provide feedback. I've been meaning to find a language partner, but I wasn't sure where to start. Do you have any recommendations on how to find one? There are various online platforms and language exchange websites where you can connect with language partners from around the world. It's a great way to practice speaking and learn about different cultures. I can even introduce you to a few reliable platforms if you'd like. That would be amazing. I'd really appreciate it. Having a language partner will not only improve my English, but also give me the opportunity to make new friends. Thank you for offering to help me in this journey. You know, learning a language is like embarking on a thrilling adventure. It's a journey of self-discovery, cultural exploration, and unlocking a whole new world of opportunities. Yes, it's like stepping into a different dimension where words become your paintbrush and sentences your canvas. Every language has its unique beauty, and by honing our skills, we can create amazing linguistic masterpieces. I couldn't have said it better myself. And as you continue to improve your English, you'll find yourself growing more confident in expressing your thoughts and ideas. You'll be able to connect with people from different backgrounds, share your stories, and truly make your voice heard on a global stage. Language truly is a gateway to the world. Imagine being able to communicate effortlessly with people from different continents, immersing yourself in diverse cultures, and building bridges of understanding. It's an incredibly empowering feeling. Exactly. And it's not just about the practical benefits. Speaking English opens up a treasure trove of literature, music, in movies that would otherwise be inaccessible. You can lose yourself in the enchanting words of Shakespeare, sway to the rhythm of poetic lyrics, and immerse yourself in the captivating narratives of English literature. It's like having a VIP pass to a world of creativity and imagination. The wealth of knowledge and inspiration that awaits is awe-inspiring. And the best part is, the more you learn, 
the more you realize how much more there is to discover. It's an ever-expanding universe of linguistic wonders. Yes, it's a lifelong journey of growth and discovery. And remember, even native English speakers continue to learn and refine their language skills throughout their lives. So, embrace the challenge, celebrate your progress, and keep reaching for the stars. You're on an incredible adventure, and I'll be here cheering you on every step of the way. Your words are truly motivating and inspiring. Thank you for being such a supportive companion on my language learning journey. I'm excited to dive deeper into the beauty of the English language, embrace its nuances, and create my own linguistic masterpiece. Together, let's paint the world with the colors of words.